Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film, Psycho, Part 1. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Marion and her boyfriend Sam are in a hotel room. They both have just finished their smelly workout. However, Marion expresses her discontent. She states that she no longer wants to keep their relationship a secret and asks Sam if they can get married, but Sam tells her that he's buried in debt. Marion leaves Sam in the hotel room and returns to her job as a real estate secretary. After a few minutes, her boss and a client walk back from lunch. The client hands Marion $40,000 in cash to buy a property. The boss tells him that he shouldn't deal in cash, but the client gives the money to Marion anyway. The client heads into the boss office, while the boss tells Marion to store the money in the bank first. They plan on getting the client to reconsider giving a check instead. Marion puts the money into an envelope and stuffs it into her bag. She hands over some files to her boss and asks if she can go home after dropping off the money at the bank, citing a headache. The boss allows and Marion leaves the office. However, she does not deposit the money into the bank. Instead, she goes home, packs a suitcase, and leaves town with the money entrusted to her. While driving out of town, Marion runs into her boss and the client at a stoplight. They see her, but think nothing of it. However, the encounter makes Marion feel anxious. Marion hurriedly drives away. She tries to drive through the night to quickly get away, but gets sleepy and decides to take a detour and sleep inside her car. In the morning, a cop passes Marion's car. The cop approaches the car and knocks on the window, waking Marion up. Startled and panicked, Marion tries to drive away. The cop quickly stops her. She tells him that she slept for too long and is in a hurry to be somewhere. He replies that she should have gone to a motel for her own safety. Marion once again tries to drive away, but gets stopped by the cop again. The cop instructs her to turn off the engine and asks to see her license. Marion carefully retrieves her license and shows it to the cop. The cop notes her license and her plate number down. Marion finally gets let go and drives away. She gets worried upon noticing that the cop is following her. Thankfully, he takes a different turn, and Marion finally relaxes. When Marion reaches the next town, she heads to a used car dealer. However, the cop from earlier sees her pull into the store and parks across the store. The cop gets out and watches Marion from a distance. Marion grabs a newspaper and meets with the owner of the dealership. Marion asks the owner if she can exchange her car for a different one, and he agrees. Marion's car is brought in to get checked by a mechanic, while she goes to look for a new car. She finds one and the owner tells her to test it out before buying. She respectfully declines, stating that she is in a hurry. The owner names the price and expects Marion to haggle, but she immediately agrees to the deal. Marion's behavior makes the owner suspicious. The owner asks her if the car is hers, and she replies that she has the necessary papers to prove it. After the owner eventually gives in, Marion heads to the restroom. She looks back and sees the police officer still standing there. Inside the restroom, she takes out $700 from the stolen $40,000. She exits and heads inside the store to finalize the deal. She walks out of the store and quickly enters her car, ignoring the cop in front of her. She hurriedly tries to drive away, but gets stopped by the mechanic, who tells her that she has forgotten her luggage in her old car. She quickly grabs it and drives away, leaving the cop and the owner confused and suspicious of her erratic and frantic behavior. Meanwhile, Marion's boss gets worried about Marion not showing up to work. The assistant tells him that she has tried calling Marion and even her sister, but has heard nothing from her. Marion's night drive to California is interrupted by a sudden but intense downpour of rain. Unable to drive in zero visibility conditions, she is forced to pull into a small motel by the name of Bates Motel. Finding no one in sight, Marion honks her horn. From the house beside the motel emerges the caretaker and owner of the motel. The motel owner welcomes her into the front office and gets her a room. When asked to log in to the registry, Marion uses a different name. The caretaker gets her bags from the car and shows her to the cabin nearest the office. The caretaker introduces himself as Norman. Norman invites Marion over for dinner at his house near the motel, and Marion takes him up on the offer. Norman leaves to prepare for dinner while Marion changes out of her rain-soaked clothes. Marion unpacks her belongings in her room and looks for a hiding spot for her stolen cash. Marion contemplates the drawers, but eventually decides to hide them in plain sight by folding them into the newspaper and placing it on the bedside table. Marion also overhears Norman and his mother arguing from the house. Norman's mother argues that Marion cannot have dinner with them, since she fears that they might end up playing hormone games after. Norman reassures her that she is only coming over to eat, but the mother remains protective of her son and refuses to let Marion in. Norman instead heads over to Marion's cabin with some food. 
Marion apologizes for having caused Norman trouble, but Norman assures her concerns and tells her that his mother is just feeling cranky tonight. Marion gestures Norman inside, but Norman tells them that they can eat in the office instead since it's warmer there. They head to the office, but Norman suggests that they eat in the parlor behind the counter. They move once more and sit down. The two engage in conversation while Marion eats her supper. They end up talking about the taxidermy birds in the parlor. Norman reveals that taxidermy is a hobby of his, but since he can't deal with dogs or cats, he just preserves birds instead. Norman adds that in addition to taxidermy, he also tends to the motel grounds and cabins and runs errands for his mother. Marion asks him if he goes out with friends, but he replies that his only best friend is his mother. Marion pities Norman for the constant abuse that he suffers from his mother. Norman answers that he wants to curse his mother, leave her, or at least defy her. However, he adds that his mother is ill and that he cannot bring himself to do that to her since her lover died a while back and that Norman is all that she has left. Marion asks Norman why he doesn't just leave, and Norman tells her that no one will be left to take care of his mother. She suggests putting his mother in a psychiatric institution, but the suggestion offends Norman. He gets riled up and angrily tells her that madhouses are horrible places. Norman defends his mother, stating that she isn't crazy most of the time. Marion apologizes and stands up to leave. Norman tries to get her to stay, but Marion refuses the offer since she has to leave early to return the money. Marion returns to her room while Norman lingers in the parlor. He removes a painting on the wall, revealing a peephole into Marion's cabin. He watches secretly like a peeping Tom as Marion gets changed. He stops himself and hurries back to the house. In her room, Marion notes down what she has used the stolen money for. However, she quickly tears the computations up and tries to flush them down the toilet. Marion closes the door and takes a shower. Unbeknownst to Marion, a dark figure quietly slips into the bathroom. The stranger approaches the shower. It pulls open the curtains and stabs the scaring Marion repeatedly. Marion falls dead, dragging the curtains down with her. Back at the house, Norman screams at his mother, who he sees covered in blood. This made Norman rush to Marion's cabin. Norman finds her dead. Norman quickly closes the windows, turns off the lights, and leaves. Norman grabs a mop and pail from the office and cleans up the mess. Norman lays the shower curtain down on the floor and wraps Marion's body in it. He then mops and wipes the bathroom clean. Norman loads Marion's body into the trunk of her car. He collects her belongings from the room, oblivious to the cash hidden inside the newspaper on the nightstand. Norman throws it all into the car and drives to the nearby swamp. He pushes the car into the swamp and it submerges under the murky water, hidden from sight forever. On the other hand, Leela, Marion's sister, visits Sam at his store. She suspects Sam of being Marion's partner in crime, but Sam tells her that he knows nothing. Suddenly, a man enters the store and intrudes on their conversation. The man introduces himself as a private detective, hired to track down Marion and the money she stole. To allay Sam's confusion, the detective tells Sam that Marion has stolen $40,000 from her employer. Sam tells him that Marion might have just been in an accident, but the detective tells him that Marion's boss saw her in her car leaving town. The detective leaves to investigate further. He goes to various motels around the city and ends up at Bates Motel. He's greeted by Norman, who mistakes him for a customer. The detective introduces himself and asks Norman a few questions. He shows Norman a picture of Marion, but Norman tells him that he hasn't seen her, without glancing at the picture. Norman adds that no one has come to the motel in weeks. The detective kindly asks him to look at the picture, and he does, but Norman repeats that he has not seen her. However, Norman later misspeaks and lets slip that people have been at the motel recently. His inconsistent answers arouse suspicion from the detective, the detective then asks to see the logbook, and Norman obliges. He finds writing in the logbook matching Marion's handwriting, confirming that Marion was indeed at the motel. The revelation causes Norman to get nervous. He starts stuttering and pretends to suddenly remember Marion. The detective asks about seeing the cabins, and Norman invites him to join while he cleans them. But the detective declines his offer. Norman goes to the cabins, but the detective notices him hesitating to enter the cabin beside the office. Before the detective can leave, Norman accidentally reveals that his mother has seen and talked to Marion. The detective asks to speak to Norman's mother, but he vehemently refuses and asks the detective to leave. Afterward, the detective calls Leela and tells her that Marion visited the motel. He tells her that he will return to the motel to investigate and will call back in an hour. He returns later that evening and breaks into Norman's house. While he sneaks upstairs, a door opens. A shadowy figure rushes at the detective and stabs him. He falls down the stairs, and the figure stabs him once more. 
An hour passes, and Leela and Sam don't get a call from the detective. They get worried, and Leela decides to go to the motel herself. Sam volunteers to go instead, while Leela waits at the store in case the detective returns. Sam later arrives at the motel, but sees neither Norman nor the detective. He calls out for the detective, but gets no response. Sam returns to Leela and tells her that no one was there, except for the old lady in the house. Unsatisfied, Sam and Leela visit the town sheriff to ask for help. They fill in the sheriff on the details of the case. The sheriff suggests that the detective might have left on his own to track down Marion and keep the money for himself. Sam and Leela insist that the sheriff call Norman to find out the truth. He obliges and calls Norman, who tells him that the detective arrived earlier tonight, asked a few questions, and left. Sam tells the sheriff that the detective went back to the motel to talk to Norman's mother. However, the sheriff tells them that Norman's mother has been dead for 10 years now. The sheriff tells them how Norman's mother poisoned her lover when she found out that he was married to another woman and then poisoned herself. Meanwhile, at the Bates house, Norman rushes upstairs to his mother. He tries to convince her to hide in the cellar, since he is sure that the sheriff will come to the house to investigate further. The mother refuses, and Norman is forced to carry her into the cellar against her will. The following day, Sam and Leela talk to the sheriff. He tells them that he has already been to Norman's house and found nothing suspicious. The sheriff and his wife walk away, but Sam and Leela are still unsatisfied with their answers, so they decide to visit the Bates Motel for themselves. They drive to the motel and are received by Norman. Pretending to be husband and wife, they get a room. Sam asks about registering in the logbook first, but Norman tells him that there is no need. Sam insists on registering, citing business purposes. Leela grabs the key and leaves the office first while Sam talks to Norman. Leela peeks into the cabin beside the office. Before she can see anything, Sam and Norman exit the office, and Leela is forced to leave the room alone for now. They settle into their cabin at the end of the motel and agree to search the cabin later for clues. They exit their cabin, and Leela sneaks into Marion's ex-cabin. Sam tries to look for Norman in the office, but cannot find him there. He follows Leela into the cabin shortly after. They search the room but find nothing. They check in the bathroom, and Sam notices that the shower curtain is missing. At the same time, Leela finds the computations that Marion tried to flush down the toilet earlier. Looking to find out more, Leela tells Sam that she will break into Norman's house to talk to his mother. While Leela does this, Sam will distract Norman. Before they execute their plan, Sam tells Leela to leave without him and report to the police if she finds anything significant. They exit the cabin, and Sam runs into Norman. Sam invites him to talk, and Norman obliges him. Meanwhile, Leela manages to sneak into the house. Leela walks up the stairs and goes through the bedrooms, but finds no one. At the same time, Sam talks to Norman. Their conversation eventually gets sidetracked, and Sam fails to hide his frustration. Sam accuses Norman of doing something bad to Marion and stealing the money. Norman realizes that he is being duped. He looks out the window and finds the house door open. He runs out but gets stopped by Sam. However, Norman manages to knock Sam out with a jar. He then rushes to the house in search of Leela. Leela notices Norman running to the house in time and hides behind the staircase. While he goes upstairs, Leela notices the door to the cellar. She enters the cellar to hide from him. There, she finds Norman's mother with her back turned. She approaches the old woman and taps her on the shoulder to get her attention. The old woman slowly turns around, revealing only an old and mummified corpse. Horrified, Leela screams, alerting Norman to her location. Norman arrives shortly after with a knife and wearing a wig in women's clothes. Norman tries to stab Leela, but Sam appears behind him and subdues him. Norman is taken into police custody. There, a psychiatrist explains that Norman is mentally ill. The psychiatrist tells them that Norman killed his own mother and her lover because he was jealous of their relationship. Written with guilt, Norman mummified his own mother and recreated her personality in his head, leading to him developing a split personality, one Norman, one mother. Since then, he has tried to simulate his mother's presence by pretending to be her, wearing her clothes, wigs, and even copying her voice. The psychiatrist adds that when Norman is attracted to a woman, the mother personality intervenes and tries to protect the Norman personality. Therefore, Marion was killed by the mother personality, not by Norman per se. The psychiatrist concludes that only the mother personality is left inside Norman's body now. The film ends with Marion's car getting pulled out of the swamp where it was sunk. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.